Lumiere Brothers. By early 1895, the brothers had invented their own device known as the cinematography. which combined camera, printer and projector. The Lumiere's also used a film speed of 16 frames per second. They considered the shot type but not the editing, which has influenced today's film societies, especially with documentaries whereby they are more bothered about getting the film footage and the feel of realism from it that hardly any or no editing is used. There was also very little or no story at all in their short films, and although this isn't true for the modern day filming, it still influenced it because we recognised that actually, for effectiveness, a story needs to be told, and therefore we developed on the ideas. The brothers held a shot until it got boring or the film ran out. Eventually, people started to realise that they were paying money for stuff they could see in the real life. The audience then started thinking, cinema is a format without a future. George Millet He is famous for lending many technical and narrative developments in the early days of cinema making. He is also extremely famous for the use of his dissolves, hand painted colour, multiple exposures and time lapse photography within his work. George Millet also had the ability to manipulate and transform reality for the use of cinematography, using things like shot types and camera movements. This has influenced today's filming as directors base the film around its use of cinematography to ensure that the right mood is felt by the audience. His technical effects are also used today to help make the film realistic and to portray whatever message they are trying to. He introduced many different scenes into film history to make a vague storyline. He also started a whole new side to filming. Edwin Porter. He was most famous as a director and helped in the famous film The Great Train Robbery. Edwin Porter was also the inventor of the continuity edit, whereby the editing process allows an establishing of a logical coherence between shots and smooth over any discontinuity. This has also influenced editing and filming today because the continuous aspect allows for a build of suspense of tension, creating a mood of the film and heavily influencing thrillers and horrors. The smoothness of shots and films nowadays is also widely considered because otherwise the film appears to be unrealistic and would therefore not attract viewers. Edwin Porter used parallel edits in one of his most famous films, Life of an American Fireman, in 1903. D. W. Griffith This man collaborated with someone to create and develop cinematic devices such as the cross-cutting technique, flashback, 180 degree rule, establishing shot, shot reverse shot, matching eye lines and maps on action. An example of a modern day film that has been influenced by these techniques and used them a number of times throughout the film would be in The Perks of Being a Wolf Lair. These techniques have changed editing and film and allow an audience to gain a stronger direct relationship with the character on screen by being allowed to enter into their life and past. The motion of the film also continues uninterrupted due to these techniques used today, especially with match on action. Griffith advanced Porter's techniques and created the first use of flashbacks and close-ups. He noticed he could get an emotional response out of his audience from different shots. Montage editing Eisenstein
Eisenstein believed that by using Montage Edison, he could manipulate the way that time came across to the audience. Two or more images can now be seen as one and create a third possible aspect causing a specific mood to be felt within the audience. This is used today in film editing whereby time is made to look quicker or slower than what it actually is. This is effective because a whole person's life cannot be shown in a two hour film and so by montage editing it becomes possible making the film more the cool shot effect. Hitchcock is an example of his effect. He experimented the effect and its purpose by showing an emotionless face with various other shots to fill in the blanks. This was tested to see whether the audience thought that his expression changed with the disruption of other shots, although it didn't. This has now been used in modern day film. The invention of digital editing started in the late 1970s. Several new types of video equipment was introduced such as time based correctors and digital video effect units. This made it easier to correct or enhance video signals. It was the start of non-linear editing. 